Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to do a cat overhead valve adjustment on if you have a truck, a bus, an RV. Uh, this will show you the basics and the principles of how to do the valve adjustment. Pretty much any cat engine for a truck or a bus that's been built in the last 20 years is going to have a mechanical or solid roller setup. So you have to adjust the valves periodically. These don't have like a car where it's got hydraulic. Um, you know, lifters where you don't have to adjust them as often. Uh, these have to be adjusted uh, depending on your service manual. Um, you know, after the first 10,000 miles and then about like every 100,000 miles after that. But look at your service manual, all engines are different. Uh, we're going to go through, we're going to show you how to do the intake and the exhaust valves and how to pin the engine, which sounds difficult, but it's not really that difficult. Uh, this isn't going to go over how to do your IVAs, your Jakes, or your injector adjustments if your engine has any of those because each engine on those is different but the intake and valve adjustments are fairly similar um, so if you enjoy this video go ahead and uh, hit thumbs up and hope you enjoy it thanks all right so the first step is to pin the engine uh it's not that hard to do uh might take two people to do though that's the that's the only downside of it so what you're gonna have to do is rotate the damper there uh, i have a turning tool for it but you could use a pipe wrench or a half inch drive ratchet with a socket and uh you're gonna look for a pipe plug on the flywheel housing which is on the rear of the engine and you're gonna want to remove that pipe plug and there is going to be behind there your flywheel and what you're going to want to do is get like a six millimeter bolt or a quarter inch bolt or a small alignment bar and put it in the hole uh, i took the plug out and drilled a hole in it to keep the bolt aligned but you do not have to do that um, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to take that bolt or alignment bar and put it in that where that plug was <clears throat> and you're going to hold pressure against that bolt against the flywheel and then you or someone else can rotate the engine and at a certain point the bolt or alignment bar will pop into place because there's a hole in the flywheel that will mean your engine is now pinned it's a top dead center for a number one cylinder and you can remove the bolt or pin now and a little trick is to mark the spot on the dampener to a bolt on the front structure that way you don't have to pin it each time but you're gonna have to rotate it again and that is how you pin the engine this is a c7 valve train looking from the exhaust side and the first thing you're going to want to do is loosen all of the rocker arm adjustment nuts loosen all of them um, i used to check each individual one and then I would adjust as necessary you can do that if you want but it's going to take you longer if you just loosen them all and then go ahead and adjust all of them you'll save quite a bit of time and what you're going to do is you're going to have to remember a little a little rhyme and the rhyme is intake exhaust intake exhaust intake exhaust and the reason you're going to want to remember that rhyme is that's which ones you're adjusting so you have intake exhaust intake exhaust intake exhaust and those are the ones you're going to be adjusting on this rotation of the engine now you're going to rotate it 360 afterward and starting from cylinder six you're going to do intake exhaust intake exhaust intake exhaust and you only have to rotate the engine twice the first time and then the next time and all of your valves will be adjusted so just remember that little rhyme um, if you have trouble remembering it or had like more questions you can just leave a comment I'll respond back so we have your intake valve has the little bridge between the two smaller valves and then your exhaust is the longer rocker arm with the single valve you're going to measure between the bridge and the floating cup on the rocker arm and then the valve stem and the floating um, floating cup on the exhaust rocker arm and you're gonna need a depending on what size adjuster nut these have 16 millimeter head uh, locking nuts and then a five or six millimeter allen wrench so get your feeler gauges 
now. Uh, this is a C7. They take a 15 thousandths intake and 25 thousandths exhaust. Uh, C9s, C13s are usually about the same, but check your check your owner's manual. It'll tell you the exact measurements. C15s are usually 15 thousandths and 30 thousandths. So we have our 15 thousandths. It's going to go between the valve bridge and the floating cup. And then what you're going to want to do is the nut's already loose, so just turn the adjuster till it's finger tight with your Allen wrench. And then you're going to hold the Allen wrench without moving it and tighten the adjuster nut. And you don't need to torque this down to a million foot pounds. Uh, you just tighten it snugly. You're going to torque it afterwards. So it should go in there without any uh, up or down movement with a slight drag. And that is perfect. That's how you're supposed to adjust it. So that's tightened snugly. You can leave that one in there for now. We're going to move on to our exhaust. So same thing. It goes between the valve stem and your floating cup. Slides in. Uh, finger tight on the adjuster. Hold the Allen wrench. And then you snug down the lock nut. Slight drag. That is adjusted now. Now you're going to move on to your intake on cylinder number two. Remember the rhyme, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. So we're going to put our feeler gauge in there from number one to number two. Same thing, finger tight, then tighten the nut. And that one's adjusted. So you're doing the intake and exhaust on number one, then the intake on two, exhaust on number three, intake on four, exhaust on number five. And then when you rotate it again 360 degrees, you'll do it starting at six, you'll do intake on six, exhaust on six, intake on five, exhaust on four, intake on three, exhaust on two. Um, now, when you pin the engine, you don't know if you're on one or six, so you have to check and see which ones are loose. If you find that all the ones on number one are tight, you'll know that you're on number six. So just start from that, work forward, opposed to the way I'm doing it here. Uh, it just so happened I was on number one already. So, okay, I've done the intake exhaust on one, the intake on two, the exhaust on three. I'm not going to do... Uh, four and five for this video, but I did those uh, four adjustments. So after you do, um, after you do each adjustment, you're going to want to mark the, uh, each adjuster nut. Uh, I use a uh, paint marker. Um, they work pretty good. They'll stay on there even after running and you're going to stripe each adjuster. That way you know which ones you've done. And, uh, pretty much all the guys in our shop do it the same way. Okay, so those are the ones we've adjusted. Now normally I would go to four and do the intake and then the exhaust on five, but for the video I'm just doing it here. Uh, we don't want this video to be half an hour long. So after you've adjusted them and striped them, um, I like to go ahead and torque these nuts. Now depending on what size uh, adjuster nut, which engine it is, you'll have to look that up. Um, this is a C7, we torque it to 25 foot-pounds. So we get the uh, 16 millimeter adjuster. It's up to 25 foot pounds. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque each one that we've adjusted, just to make sure it's uh, properly torqued. Uh, you don't wanna over tighten it, that'll wear them out or strip it. And uh, that's pretty much it on the overhead adjustment. If you have any other questions, just leave me a comment. <laughs>